In today's video guys, we are going to be looking at some easy, no fuss pink flowers that are great for your garden, porch or patio. Some of them are going to be perennials which means that they come back every year and some will be annuals which means that they only last for one year. If you have never been here before, my name is Marlene. Welcome to Marlene's How To's, my home and garden channel. We're going to go ahead and start off with our sun patients. And as the name says, they like sun, which means six or more hours of sunlight per day. They're very, very hardy. They're drought resistant and they can be used by themselves or in containers with other flowers or in your flower beds. They're absolutely gorgeous and pretty resilient. And these right here are their cousins, the impatience. Their needs are a little bit different. They actually prefer part sun to full shade, which means six or less hours of sunlight per day. And once you do that for them, guys, they will flourish for you and be absolutely gorgeous. What I like about them is that they're quite inexpensive. You can start them from seed if you like, if you have enough time in your area for them to come up fast enough in the spring for you. Or you can get them in, you know, small seedlings from your garden center. This is how mine started out from some seedlings that I bought and this is what they became. They are absolutely gorgeous, guys. You can't even see the container at this point that they were in. And you know, they go from spring right through to fall and they just give you more and more flowers. You don't even have to deadhead them if you don't want. You can just basically have them fall off and new one comes in. Towards the fall season, you'll see where, you know, some of the leaves, the older ones will drop and it'll get a little leggy, but it is still beautiful because I was still enjoying mine here in the fall season. If you're in a tropical era, of course, then this will not be an issue for you. And guys, be sure to know your planting zone or your growing zone so you know exactly when you can start putting out these tender annuals. So that way you don't have a cold snap and that, you know, hurts them, you know, or actually kills them out. So you want to be familiar with that. And this is on the pack of any seeds or you can even look it up online. And over here are some beautiful petunias. And these are actually a mainstay of most summer gardens. They have a mounding habit, which means that they spread out a lot. Sometimes they'll cascade a little bit like this one did right here. And of course you have varieties that specifically are made for that. They have a trailing habit like these wave petunias right here. And I put some out and you can see they're way ahead of the marigolds behind them because they are just loving it. They like well-drained soil and they can be put in containers or you can put them by, um, you know, in flower beds. One thing I'll say though is that they are heavy feeders, so you will want to make sure that you give them plant food, typically every two weeks. If it's like in the 90s, maybe like once per month because if it's too dry, you know, it's gonna be and hot too much for them. And these right here are some beautiful cone flowers. This one, you really can kill it. It is absolutely easy, easy, very, very, very easy. You can see that bees love them. Um, butterflies love them too. It's the same thing um, that's called echinacea that you may have the tea or the cough drop sometimes. Um, they're fairly disease resistant and you know they come back every year so you know it's just perfect. If you can't start with any other one start with this one I would say. And if you love gardening and you love flowers guys be sure to hit the subscribe button and tap on the notification bell so you never miss an upload and you can also go back to see some older ones as well too they get recommended re recommended to you from time to time if you're subscribed and you have the notification here is another favorite of mine guys and that would be begonias i absolutely love them another favorite of mine some of them have you know dark colored leaves some of them the leaves are um, more lightly green colored they like part shade so you know not too much sun some of them can handle the sun but the perfect situation for them really is to be in part shade some of them will even handle shade if you have no direct sunlight so here are some with the darker leaves you can see um that have some white ones in here too you know because i was planting them in a recent video and you know they just do so well they actually to me look their best in the fall season when they're taller and they have a lot of blooms and they really spread out for you guys i'm telling you this one is more than a bang for your buck and i did a recent video where i showed you the step by step on how to do it and this is i'm going to be linking it at the end for you so you can always go ahead and watch it especially if you're a beginner this is really really important for you to go ahead and catch this video it was so much fun planting those and this right here is just a little sneak peek of the porch my front porch you know when i put those pink flowers down a few of them and it was just fabulous so be sure to check out that video guys so you can get all the details of this 
Over here are some ones that I had brought in one fall to make sure that they survived and they were so beautiful in my container. Next we have pentas and these are very resilient, very disease resistant. You can't go wrong with these. And you can see even the leaves, you know, that they have that nice pattern. And the thing about them is that, you know, they produce a lot of flowers. Hummingbirds love them. Butterflies love them. Uh, perhaps bees, if they can reach them, because, you know, those flowers are kind of shaped like a trumpet a little bit. And as you can see, it has five points, the petals, and that's where the name Pentas came from. They are so, so beautiful. And, you know, the more you, you know, pick the spent blooms off, is the more that you will get out of them. And I use this as a thriller plant in one of my previous videos, which I will link at the end for you. So these can be planted in your flower beds, or you can have them planted in containers, either by themselves or mixed in with other plants. But it's just always so beautiful to see these and to see their resilience. You can't go wrong with these. And they're fairly inexpensive too. These are annuals, so they do not come back unless you're in a, you know, a hardy area, like a tropical area. Speaking of tropical, here we have some beautiful hibiscus. These are absolutely lovely. I just, I can't stop looking at them. Some of these actually, they are like anywhere from six to eight inches across in diameter. You can see right here, I'm holding it up to show you exactly how large it is. Hummingbirds absolutely love them. You know, they just always are going in for these. If you're in an area that is not tropical, you will need to bring them indoors, maybe like in your garage or, um, you know, next to your door where they can get a little light coming in for them to survive over to the next season. If you're in a tropical area like my friend Roslyn, then this is absolutely perfect for you to have year round and round. For those of us who are not in that situation, it's best to just have them in a container so you have that versatility of bringing them in whenever you want. And you can always repot them to larger pots as time goes by as well. And over here, this would be their cousin. So let's say you don't want to have, you know, to deal with bringing them in, you know, when the weather is colder, if you're not in a tropical area, then the Rose of Sharon would be perfect for you because as you can see, they're very similar to the hibiscus. They're in the same family as is Jamaican sorrel. It's called Malvasi, that's the family. And this is gorgeous, I love it. Hummingbirds come here all the time in my garden. And these, you know, they kind of die back a little bit. Just the leaves, they fall off and they spring right back up. And then, you know, in the spring. And these can grow anywhere from six to eight feet tall. So they make great hedging plants as well too. And over here, these are some beautiful, beautiful crepe myrtle. Of course, they come in different colors, but this, as you can tell, I like pink. Um, this is the one that I chose. It is very resilient, very disease resistant. Disease resistant. So if you're wanting to have a little small tree in your yard, because these don't grow to be more than 30 feet. So typically anywhere between 15 to 30 feet is how big it's going to be. Only thing I'd say they have pretty strong roots, so you wouldn't want to put them too, too close to your house. But other than that, they are perfect. They offer shade. You know, they have pollinators that come by. Sometimes you see the butterflies flying around them. I'll see them, you know, through the window sometimes. And they're just absolutely gorgeous. And they, they're there with you from, you know, mid-blooming, from mid-summer to late summer. And I'll be doing a future video on this, you know, going to, talking about all the details of growing it. But they're absolutely wonderful. And then next over here we have our hydrangeas. And they are, this is another lovely one as well. Of course, they come in different colors. These ones are the mop head hydrangeas specifically. And you can see why they kind of look like a mop. These were so large when I saw them. Um, and some of them, they will change color depending on the pH of your soil. Because for me, from mine, they typically turn blue. So you have to look at the variety that you're getting to see if it changes color based on the pH for your area. Because some of them do. Some of them stay the same way. And they don't. They do like afternoon shade. But honestly, you know, once you put them in an area where they get sun and then they have a little protection from the shade in the afternoon, maybe like the east side of your of your house, then they're going to reward you so well. They just need to be pruned back, um, usually um, in early spring when you can see where the buds are coming up. And I'll do a future video on that as well to showing you how I prune mine to get the best results. But they're just absolutely wonderful. I can't say enough about these hydrangeas. Next, we have gladiolus, and these are planted by bulbs, usually in the very merry month of May is when you typically would plant them. But again, you always want to check your area for your growing season to see when is the best time. And you know they'll not have damage from um, any like late snaps to get frozen over. I planted them with some iris right here, so once the iris had bloomed, then it was their time to shine. As you can see, it's very pretty. 
Some of them grow pretty tall. They have some shorter varieties, but this one typically for me grows to about five or more feet. So basically as tall as I am. You can see this one I had to stake it because it was getting so heavy. So you may want to get stakes or like trellises for them. Future video coming there as well too. And over here we have some verbena and I absolutely love these. They are very, very resistant to heat and you know, they're drought resistant as well. They have a trailing habit, so they make, they're perfect for hanging baskets. They're also great for container gardens. And I went over that in a previous video showing you like the spiller type plant, that kind of a habit where they hang over the side and that way it gives more dimension to your container garden. Or you can put them in flower beds too. And as you can see, butterflies love them and I can certainly understand why, because I do too. Next we have geranium. And this one always gives me that very vintage feeling because I remember growing up as a little girl in Jamaica and they always had these, especially the, you know, the older ladies, they would always have geraniums in their yard. Sometimes they'll have them in like a window box or, you know, like a hanging basket or something like that paired with other things. But they make great companions with verbenas that we just saw a moment ago or by themselves, whichever ones you prefer. Absolutely gorgeous and resilient. And over here is this beautiful rose from my garden. It is one of the sweetest flowers that I've ever smelled. It pleases me every time that it blooms. What I'll say about roses is that most people will want to have roses and they're really nice, but they are high maintenance. And we're talking about easy flowers, but I did want to mention them because people love having roses and you can understand why. They're pretty, some of them smell so sweet, but even these knockout varieties right here, they're still susceptible to pests like aphids and so on. And sometimes they can really give them a hard time in the midsummer. Also, too, if you're in an area like me, like the southern, southeastern United States, where it gets very hot and muggy sometimes, they're prone to fungal diseases like black spot and all of that. So, and you also have to deadhead them too, where, you know, when the blooms are spent, you trim them back. And you also have to prune them at other times in the season too. So I did want to mention this to you, that if you are going to get these in your beginner garden, you have to be prepared for that. So this may not be the first choice, but certainly it would be a good one, you know, once you are ready for it. But what can we say about a rose? Absolutely wonderful. This over here is curcumin, and this is actually the plant that provides you with turmeric. And the turmeric actually comes from the root of this plant, and it's, their rhizomes actually very similar to ginger. This would be the ones on the right for the curcumin, and on the left would be the ginger. Very, very similar. And, you know, the turmeric comes from the powdered, you know, when it's powdered out after it's dried, where you can shred them. And this is what it looks like. You can see the color right there. And we can't say enough about turmeric and it's all its health benefits. It has become so popular over recent years. You know, we have it in our curry powder sometimes, and it's absolutely wonderful. This plant, though, is very tropical, so it likes to have soil that is well-drained and fairly rich. Once you have that down, then you're pretty much good to go. They are tender though, so you'd have to take the rhizomes up if you're not gonna be you know, using them to plant the following year. And over here now we're gonna take a look at other season plants. So these are some spring blooming plants. They go a little bit into the summertime too, and these are dianthus. You know I love these if you've been watching any of my previous videos. I just love, love, love dianthus. And they attract butterflies and hummingbirds too. And they're just absolutely wonderful. Um, one, the only thing you have to do is after a few years have passed, you have to, you know, divide them, meaning that you take them out, split the plant, and then put it in two separate pots, two or more pots, because if not, you're going to get less blooms, which is what is happening to mine right now. Not this one, but the one that you, um, you'll see in my spring porch video. Other than that, they're good to go. And over here now we have some um, creeping phlox, another favorite. This one here, it's a spring bloomer. And... It's a good ground cover. It spreads a lot. So if you don't want something that spreads a lot, then you can put this in a container and just have them flow over to the sides and you can enjoy them that way. If you don't mind spreading all over in your flower bed, then I would say definitely go for it. When they're not blooming, the green leaves are just as beautiful in your garden and they make everything look lush. Great for rock gardens too, if that's what you're having. Another spring bloomer here, this is rhododendron. And this grows more like, I would say like a tall shrub. It goes pretty high, anywhere from six, maybe to nine feet sometimes. They do need acidic soil though. So once you have that done and the soil has good drainage and you're pretty much good to go. The same is to be said here for these azaleas. These are very good for the so southern United States, southeastern United States. And they're a mainstay in most southern gardens. You'll see them, they're great hedging plants. You may put them in very large containers, but typically they're used for hedging, you know, along walkways little privacy you know in front of your porch 
it's great for that. And next we have another spring bloomer here and this would be the tulip tree, sometimes called Salsa Magnolia and I absolutely love them. This is another one here, you just plant it as long as you don't have too many things growing around it at the roots because they don't like to be crowded out at the roots. So if you notice, I don't have anything else down there growing with them. They're just in this little spot by themselves. And they are slow growers, but they do reward. And you can see the beautiful flowers, how gorgeous they are. These are not great for cut flowers because they drop, you know, maybe in the two days or so. So it's best to enjoy them outdoors where they last for a longer time. And they're one of the first bloomers that you will see in your spring garden so it's always you know a welcoming sign that you know some warm weather is on the way over here now we have a winter bloomer and they, these would be your um, Lenten rose also called hellebores and they're absolutely gorgeous they bloom from Lent right over into I would say early spring and they're just so delicate and these are actually perennials they're very cold hardy so once you plant them then they will come back year after year so definitely worth your time and for fall bloomers, of course, we have our chrysanthemums. These are typically enjoyed in containers, but you can put them in the ground. And um, I do have a video um, where I showed you how to get them to come back year after year. So it can be done. Um, they just need the right protection. And again, you know, if you subscribe to my channel, you basically get to see all of these. You can always go back and check to see previous videos that I did. So you can always repot them, you know, in larger containers and they come back year after year with the right protection. So here are our rows of Sharon again, guys. So whatever you decide to choose, you know, for your pink flowers, bear in mind that you have different ones for different needs. Always make sure you check your growing zone. Make sure you check to see if you're going to be putting them in an area that has part sun or part shade because that's going to determine if the plant does well or not. Major factor as well as the watering needs. Hope you got some great ideas from this. And you can, you know, this is just beautiful. It livens up your space. They're absolutely wonderful. Whatever you decide to use, whether you want to get annuals or plants that come back every year. I thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check out the videos that I'm linking on the end for more information. And happy gardening. Take care.